Why does the shroud of disrespect surround the average unicorn by a huge portion of the community? Are they really the camping, redlining, gold spamming, deceitful scum as a lot of people describe them? Before we begin, I would like to tell you that this video is not meant to criticize any kind of group in World of Tanks. It is simply meant as a presentation of what sets unicorns apart from average players and is meant to bring the community closer to the mindset of how these people think, including how to become one and why they do certain things average players do not. Hey guys, my name is Kaizu and today we're going to talk about unicorns in World of Tanks and the perception of unicorns in general by the community. I would like to share a little bit of information about myself, how I became a good player in a short time. It took me 3000 battles to get to around 2.4 thousand IBN 8. This is hugely the results of me watching a ton of streamers from the CIS region back in the day, reading guides about tanks and understanding maps and positioning. I had a lot of time as a young guy back in the day and the game truly fascinated me with its mechanical and analytical deaths. Back in the day there weren't many usable guides on YouTube and Twitch wasn't as popular as it is today. But today it has been never been easier to learn and get better. The joy for me in this game stems from being able to have fun while providing good, entertaining content for my audience. So who are they? Unicums, as for what slang goes, refers to the best players of the game. They are the distinguished individuals who boast high damage per battle stats coupled with high win rate percentages, seasoned with high marks of excellence count in World of Tanks. A player's debut on 8 is the usual metric that is chosen for determining whether someone is a unicum or not. Unicums are able to decide the outcome of random battles on their own. If they play extremely well, they can even turn the long-lost battles into crazy victories. A unicum is usually a very experienced player who has explored every part of the endgame content the game has to offer, has most of the tech tree unlocked, and has multiple reward tanks obtainable from campaign and possibly even took part in some sort of high-level competition within World of Tanks. But what are the factors that separate unicums from average players in World of Tanks? As a super unicum, this topic for me is really easy to cover and I would like to help the community understand what sets the average unicum apart from the average player world of tanks. It is very important to understand that most unicums are maximalists. In the sense of the word, I refer to being a maximalist as a person who is always striving to be the best in anything he does. As in any other video game or as in real life, the maximalist mindset is not present in every person. It sets people apart who are happy with their $10 per hour wage for the rest of their lives from the people that are constantly striving to get a promotion at their workplace or find other jobs where they make more money. Okay, this might have sounded stupid, but I couldn't really come up with a better example. In other words, there are people that are happy with their current situations and do not do anything significant to achieve change, and there are the ones that want to win life and are never fully satisfied with themselves, their situations and their performance in different fields of their lives. This can be roughly translated to describe unicorns in World of Tanks. Let's call Unicorns maximalists and the average player who doesn't really want to get particularly good and just plays the game to unlock all the tanks in the tech tree a minimalist. Unicorns spend and have spent enormous amount of time trying to get better compared to the average Joe. They commit time to understand the deepest of the game's mechanics. They have put their self-defense mechanism aside and are learning day by day from their own mistakes in randoms. They want to compete and triumph over others doing super high damage, winning 1v1s and carrying games is what makes them happy. But they're never fully satisfied with themselves in this regard. World of Tanks is a team-based game, but it is not team play oriented. Winning is always secondary in the mind of a unicorn, and because of this, they learned how to be self-reliant without the need of help from their allies. Self-reliance also causes people to be more selfish in terms of trying to make every game their own. This is a toxic trait, but it is the combination of the game's nature and the maximalist slash competitor mindset that we talked about which created this in Unicorns. Unicorns do not necessarily commit more time to play the game than the average players, but they most definitely commit more time and energy trying to understand the deep aspects of the game, such as angling, positions, equipment, map awareness and aim. They are overall maximalists in terms of achieving results, getting higher DPGs, more gun marks, but most importantly what sets them apart in my opinion is that they all possess the ability to look into themselves in case of a personal failure. They peek into a Yakpan City one ritual and take a thousand damage because they peeked into that street without putting their track out to see if they got spotted first. They will definitely learn from that, whereas the average player will get panned in the turret in his object 140, but goes into the next battle without checking tanks.gg for the big spot allocation on his tank. In my opinion, the commitment to dig deep and go beyond the baseline of World of Tanks gameplay is the very basic pinnacle that sets really good players apart from the average ones. Unicorns understand how the game works 99% of the time because they spend their time learning instead of just driving their tanky tank forwards and looking at how magnificent the Yakpan C1 with gun looks like. 
And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Everyone will have fun in different ways in this game. I'm going to go into this a bit more at the end of my video, but I do respect average players equally. Now I would like to talk about why a huge portion of the community hates Unicrooms. This has multiple reasons and I'm going to go into and talk about each and every single one. The good players of other games are respected and looked upon, such is the case in CSGO. For example, Simple is regarded by many and is known by 90% of the community as the best sniper and this fame kind of built up a personal cult where he's regarded as an ethereal being in terms of knowledge and super high level gameplay. This cannot really be said about Unicorns in World of Tanks. People regard them as gold slinging, redlining, cheating Unicorns who only care about WN8 and damage and some of this is true, but let's break down this into segments. Gold spamming. Gold or premium shells in this game obviously grant you the advantage of having more penetration and you will be much more successful in terms of doing damage, no matter if you're a better or a worse player. Unicums can be seen using and playing with gold shells more than the average person, but this can be explained by looking at a major game mechanic called RNG. Let's take a look at an easily understandable example. The RNG spread for penetration will be minus or plus 25%, so the average penetration of the ISM with AP is 250, but the actual pen roll can range from 187.5 to 312.5. If you are presented in an angled EVA 100 lower plate and you have AP loaded, it means that there is a chance that the RNG will decide that you simply will not penetrate the enemy tank based on the low penetration roll. On the other hand, the, the premium APCR shell of the IS-7 has an average penetration of 303 mm. This means that the penetration spread will be between 227 and 378 mm, which is 90% of the time going to be enough to penetrate. This is the mechanic that Unicorns like to abuse, simply because they do not want to be relying on RNG to penetrate their shots. Remember when I talked about being a maximalist? If you had access to a Volkswagen Polo and a Ferrari, which one would you pick to drive your girlfriend to the local restaurant? Of course you would pick the Ferrari, since you must be able to afford it to be able to drive it, right? And you have it. But let's translate this example into World of Tanks. If you have access to credits and the gold ammunition is a major deciding factor of doing more or less damage, taking the maximalist mentality into account, which one do you think a player is going to be shooting you with if he's striving to have the best results? Of course the shell with superior penetration. Unicom spent countless hours on farming credits and they actually do not buy it for real money. Other than of course maybe premium tanks to be able to farm it with. Anybody can do this but you should not hate Unicorns because of this, since once again it is the game's nature and circumstances that allow this to happen. Unfortunately some heavy tanks are completely rendered obsolete and unusable because of this, but the player is not at fault ultimately, he simply uses the tools which Wargaming provides him with. And Wargaming made this available to everyone, not just to him. Cheating. There are a lot of cheats around unfortunately and while they can provide you with some insane stuff like Tundra, which I'm not gonna go into since I do not want to spread these kind of cheats, they will ultimately not provide you with a game breaking ability to win games or do damage. All of the aim bots that you see on the internet are much worse than the aim of your average good player and besides, cheating is lame. Calling Unicorns cheaters is the average excuse for the Coper that just got penned 3 times in a row in his crown wagon scupola by a better player. Or when someone calls cheats after they get killed sitting in a bush unspotted in the light tank, but what happened is the better player checked for spotting checks and figured out that our individual was indeed sitting in that particular bush. There may be unicorns that cheat, shame on them, but most of the time it is not going to be game breaking, and most unicorns do not cheat. Redlining, camping, using HP of allies for their own advantage. The really good players are always going to go where the most damage can be farmed. In heavies they will never ever camp, instead opting for a more direct approach on the battlefield, since once again the closer you are, the less RNG is going to matter when it comes to inaccuracy of shots. There are indeed more toxic unicorns in the game who just sit at the red line in low tiers and farm beginner players with full gold loadout in a tank which provides massive amounts of debut on 8, but this is not really prevalent in high tiers. These stat patterns and silk lovers will perform much worse than the average unicorn at high tiers and will also be much easier to destroy for average players too. A good player will indeed fall back if the flank is falling and he's about to die next, but once again, this can be attributed to the competitor maximalist mindset. Who wouldn't like to do an additional 2000 damage after falling back, realizing that the battle is long lost and there is nothing he can do to change the course of it from the front line. As for myself, I focus on winning battles as much as I focus on dealing damage. I usually help my allies by giving them ideas in the game what to do which would potentially make the battle go in our favor, and I also help them whenever they are in trouble. Most Unicorns have a habit of using their allies HP to farm more damage during the game. 
they will very rarely take shots if the tank sitting around the corner is a high alpha tank like a Yak Panzer or a Clipper like a 57 Heavy. But if it is a single shooter with not so much high damage, they will understand the rule of DPM and probably will go into trade. Most of the time, however, they will wait for allies to soak the damage up. And once again, this is a toxic indeed from an outsider point of view, but I cannot stress enough the fact that this game might be team-based, but is not team-oriented. Certain OP tanks such as the Chieftain and the Object 279 are also associated with Unicums, since they were the first ones to play them, which sparked hatred and envy from the community directed at these individuals. But I covered this topic in my These Tanks Destroy World of Tanks video. Fun Factor Do Unicums have more fun than the average World of Tanks player? This topic is hugely subjective, but I'm going to try to go into it a little bit. Being a Unicum comes with its cost in terms of having fun. Since we're talking about maximalist individuals, if they get shit on by bad RNG for an entire session, get Himmelsdorf in their light tanks, or bounce 4 shots in a row because of RNG, they will obviously have the same amount of fun as your average player. AKA none. RNG is designed to make the gameplay more colorful, but sometimes it can be really punishing. Unicums will have fun when they have high damage games, whereas average players will have fun just driving around and shooting people. This is why I suggested that the fun factor aspect of the game is highly subjective. It's a game after all that is meant to kill time and entertain the individual who plays the game, with different aspects of the gameplay being fun for each group. Fun stems from being successful in one's objective. You might be asking, what can you do to get better? I would suggest subscribing to this channel since I share a lot of my own gameplay and also make tutorial videos and guides to help others. You can also check my live stream out at twitch.tv slash kaizu or the live stream section in general on Twitch for World of Tanks. You can find a lot of good players streaming their gameplay and you can pick a huge amount of great positions and tricks up from there. I hope this video helped you learn more about Unicorns as a subgroup in World of Tanks and cover some of the misconceptions and myths about them and their playstyle. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.